Wow. Welcome back to the Student Pilot Cast, everyone. I bet you thought I was never coming back. Today, we'll finish up my first night flight with part two of Tour to Phoenix. Chandler Tower, Cherokee 4121 Tango, it's at Chandler Air Service. We have Sulu, and uh, we'd like a south departure, please. One does it set to be an angel? Where does the sun go when it sleeps? Okay, SPC listeners, I guess I need to apologize again for leaving you all hanging like that. It's been a crazy, crazy month, and it doesn't seem to be letting up, so I just can't wait any longer to get another episode out, so here we go. My hat goes off to Uncontrolled Airspace and and Jason over at the Finer Points Podcast for their amazingly regular release schedule. (laughs) It's pretty impressive. Oh, and I need to apologize for my voice today. I've got a cold, so I'm sure it's going to come through a bit, so bear with me, and hopefully next time I'll be 100% again. Okay, enough about that. It's time to get on with my night tour of Phoenix. When I last left you, we'd just taken off from a stop-and-go at Mesa's Falcon Field, and we were headed down to Phoenix Mesa Gateway Airport, formerly Williams Gateway, to do a few more stop-and-goes. The big difference between Gateway and the other airports I'd been to that night is the fact that Gateway is a decommissioned Air Force base, so the runways are absolutely huge. Three parallel runways that seem to go on forever and are as wide as a football field. Okay, so let's pick it up on our way south toward Gateway. Here we're just heading to the airport and trying to decide which direction to land, as we would have almost a direct crosswind on the runways at Gateway, which are runways 1, 2, and 3, 0, left, right, and center. Larry decides to have me do a straight in for 1, 2, left, while we listen for other traffic. You'll also hear me not be able to find one of the runways, which is amazing considering their size, but it was lit up a little bit differently and a little bit harder to see. Keep in mind that these runways are huge, 150 feet wide by over 10,000 feet long for two of the runways. The one we would be landing on is the run of the litter, not quite making 10,000 feet at a measly 9,300. So make yourself comfortable in the back seat of my warrior for a few minutes, keep your seatbelt on because of the wind, and enjoy. Should I just turn south? Yep. Okay. Okay, you're only nine miles from Gateway, and we're going to turn to the Gateway frequency here in a moment. And we could do a straight in for one one left. See the beacon for Gateway already to the left of your nose, way out here. About Falcon traffic. This is Cessna 66018, uh, three and a half miles to the uh, north, uh, passing over the tower. Also, we turn to a heading of. Well, that's from. Let's get a two indication. Okay, it's about it's going to be about 135 degrees from Gateway. Yeah, I see it. Okay, we'll head right over that direction because the runways are three parallel runways. And let's go ahead in a moment here and switch to uh, some traffic there. Oh, uh, this is six six two one eight. It's uh, three to the north. 3,500 will be able to find Southeast Falcon. Yeah, if you like, go ahead and tell them. Falcon traffic, Cherokee 22 Tango is departing the area to the south. uh, Falcon traffic. Towards Gateway. Falcon traffic, Archer 41. Yeah, you can say something like I'm two to the south headed towards Gateway. Now we're on. Now we're on. Nope, that's the wrong frequency. We're on two. I think we're on Gateway now, which is one. 20.6 20.6 was a common traffic advisory frequency. It is. Now we're seven miles to the north. What we got to decide is where they're going to land up. Should we uh, just go up uh, 500 feet? Well, tra- yeah, pattern and altitude was. It's 25. But should we overfly? It's 26. GM oh, 26. Crossing midfield, 2000, landing taxiway Yankee. Helicopter. Okay, just uh, gateway traffic, Warrior 4122 Tango, we're, I'm showing seven to the north. What are we going to do? Uh, we're planning a straight in for one, two left. Okay. We'll see what they tell us for that. Tower's closed, so we're going to have a crosswind whichever land, runway we land yeah. on. Yeah, so. all right. Gateway traffic, Turkey 22 Tango is uh, six and a half miles to the uh, north, and we're going to make a straight in approach for two, uh, one, two. for one, two left. left. Uh, gateway traffic. Okay, we don't need to go any higher. It's 2600 for pattern. No. 
and you can see the three parallel runways and you can see the runway on the left so we're just going to do a straight in for the left one and we're going to go around the pattern a couple I only see two runways there's a big one over here to the right it does not have uh, oh okay there's, yeah. there's one the one in the middle and there's a one on the left so yeah. we'll head right for the one on the left we'll use the pappies okay and we'll make an announcement. We're, when you get down there, tell them we're, we're a one-mile final. It, it's, it, there's no hard, fast rule. You could call it five miles, four miles, three miles, two right. miles. Uh, I don't hear anybody here. If I heard other traffic here, I'd be telling them I'm on a four-mile final for one, two left. I'm on a two-mile final. And uh, when we depart, we'll tell them we're going to left-hand pattern for runway one, two left. See the big one to the right and the yep. one to the center. And just waiting for that to turn. Is, is that left one white? I can't. You got one white and three red. Okay. So I tell you right now, I worked here six years for the Marshals, and the MD-80 land here at night after after the towers closed. So yeah, they use either the center or the other, the center runway or the the big one, the the uh, westernmost runway. I don't think we ever landed on this one. So we have a crosswind here. Yes, so we that's, do. That's cool. Well, we just. Okay. We're about a three-mile final because it's that's four miles to the center of the airport. So I subtract okay. a mile. I usually tell, think, figure that's to the center of the airport, not to the end of the runway. So gateway traffic, uh, Cherokee two two tangos on a three-mile final for one two left uh, gateway. Gateway traffic radar two three is at the cargo ramp. Be taxiing uh, the Alpha two three zero left departure and traffic check. Oh, they're departing on three zero. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, we got a big crosswind landing to make here, so we get a little closer. We'll stop on that left rudder. He's going to depart three zero left. We could. Uh, yeah, there's somebody out there. There's some kind of traffic I'm seeing. There was a helicopter landing, but I tell what that is. I see or what direction it's going. Could be it's ground traffic. I think I'm looking at. So either way, we could go. Uh, he's taking off three zero left. We could uh, go out there, loop around, and uh, we could go out there, depart, turn around, and uh, and uh, tell him we're heading a right down for three zero right. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, we'll see. Let's land. Gateway okay, traffic. This is Cessna six six zero one eight, uh, thirty five hundred feet over uh, Superstition Springs, coming in for a touch and goes uh, runway three right. Cessna zero one eight. Oh, that's our runway. Uh, correction, oh. three zero right. So, tell you what we'll do. Let's just go ahead and land, and we'll depart, and we'll turn around and uh, land the other way. What the heck? He's, I don't, he didn't say how far out he was, did he? He's over Superstition Springs. That's right here. Oh, okay. That's all right. We'll circle out to the other side of the runway, and uh, we'll turn around after we take off. We'll come back in the other way. We'll just turn around after we've departed, and we'll tell them we're on a right base. All right, I'm going to... In other words, we'll take off, get out there a ways. I'm going to go into my slip here. Got more rudder there. Speed where it should be now on 70. Again, you got to get over on the center line here, so we'll yeah. just... But it might, we'll see if it's a little better crosswind going the other way, so... That's a good crosswind landing. Yeah, I like it. Hold it all the way down to the runway. Keep the speed where it should be. We got full flaps. So this much crosswind, we could have done maybe one less notch of flaps. Wow. But it's not gussy. It, it, it's, it's working well. It's working fine. Keep the speed where it should be. And boy, we feel like we're about to stop here. All right. That first one is a pretty good landing. It, it felt good. We came to a stop, you know, night currency requirements and all, and then took off again. To explain the night landing thing to those of you who may not be pilots yet, when training or when keeping night currency, you have to make night landings to a complete stop and then take off again instead of doing the normal touch and goes. Okay, so we head on out, and to conform with the rest of the traffic, we decided to depart one two left and do a little turnaround in the pattern and do the rest of our stop and goes on three zero right. During this time, you'll hear a bit of other traffic, including another small airplane doing stop-and-goes on our runway, as well as, yes, a C-130 on one of the other runways. you want to make an announcement for yeah, me? Yeah, I'm going to make an announcement for you. Anyway, traffic, Warrior 412 Tango, we're departing runway uh, 1, 2 left, and we're going to turn around and uh, do a stop-and-go and 3-0 and, uh, right, uh, gateway traffic. 
Is that our traffic over there? Nah, uh, he's kind of far out there. Well, this guy coming in didn't say anything to me. Uh, and that's a big runway. So what we could do is you get out here a little way, we'll make a left. Phoenix Nation nice. traffic, Raider 23, uh, military C-130, taxiing at 230 left via Alpha. So once we get high enough, we'll make a 90 left, another 90 right, and we'll be on a right base for 3-0 right. Does that make sense? Yeah. So let's just make left turns. Yeah, let's just yeah, make a left turn, and then we're going to make a right turn. Uh, Cherokee, uh, 2 2 Tango, what are, the, what are the winds favoring right now? Well, uh, we weren't quite sure. We thought it was kind of a toss-up, but it seems like everybody's using uh, 3 zero. so we're going to turn around and do a couple more stop and goes on 3 zero right. We just departed 1-2, though, and we're going to turn around here and land on 3 zero right. Uh, Cessna 66018 has you in sight, and uh, we'll follow uh, number two. Yeah, thanks a lot, 2 2 Tango. We make a little left turn, because we, we're going to have to get out here a little ways so we can yeah. turn around, so... And once you get on about a 90, we're going to just go ahead and turn around. We don't need to go a whole lot higher because we're going to just keep it in close and turn around. Phoenix Mesa, traffic radar 2-3, single C-130. Approaching hold short, 3-0 left. Forward departure, Phoenix Mesa. Okay, you see the runway out there behind us? I yep. can't see it. Let's I go, can see it. Let's and there's ahead. our traffic right there. Okay, let's go ahead and turn around. Let's make a 180 right here. And I'll let them know. Uh, gateway traffic, this is Cessna 66018, Smith Hill, right down, wind for 30 right, stop and go. Uh, we have 22 Tango, still leave his turning back to final, 30 right. Gateway traffic. Okay, nice traffic, traffic later, 23, so you'll see 130 taking. You don't need to go any higher, really. 30 right for departure, Phoenix, nice traffic. We'll just level off here on a right base. 22 Tango, right base for 30 right, gateway. Taken off. I uh, just want to let you know your radio is uh, a little unclear and unreadable. Roger, Phoenix Mesa traffic. Reader 23 is position hold 30 left. We'll be uh, departing uh, up to uh, 4,000 right to 0906 Mesa traffic. Well, it's just, it's, it doesn't really matter. It's a toss up here. It's a month, yeah. just as much crosswind from this side as it was from the other side. Just direction. depends on which side you want to practice. Yeah, exactly. Whether <laughs> you want to push the left or the right runner, you're right. Uh, good, pra good crosswind practice, though. Uh, Cessna 66018 is turning base. Please so right, side base, gateway traffic. A little low. Yeah, we're drifting to the right here, yeah. so we'll have to be... Phoenix Mesa traffic, radar 23, as you go C-130, departing 30 left. The uh, return to the north of 090 up to 4000, Phoenix Mesa traffic. Good wind. I'm going to leave it at two notches this time. Yeah, if you want to see if it, I, you know, the, it's fairly uh, steady wind, so the, the three notches didn't hurt. But try it with two this time. What the heck? We'll, we'll just keep it on seventy just for. A lot of guys do this, do it this way. They hold the crab for a while till they get closer. It's a good way to practice it by starting it out here, though. Uh, okay. You go ahead. And you get used to that input that you have to put in. And, uh, Almost, I don't know, they're both about the same. I wouldn't yeah. say one's any easier than the other. Just keep the speed where it should be so we don't get too slow, just in case it gets gusty. Don't let off your slip if you don't. If you need it, go ahead and use it all the way to the ground. So you guys, see how it's starting to go left yeah. again? We just hold it all the way to the ground. We're not going to. He's pretty close behind us, isn't he? Yeah, he's far enough back. And I don't think we ever told him we were doing a stop and go. Okay. If he can't see us, he's in trouble. <laughs> Flaps back up. Okay. I'll get it for you. Yeah. Gotta hold that left and aileron. Okay, we try to uh, do to tango departing three zero right, stand in the pattern. We got the C one thirty in sight off the left runway. Phoenix Mesa traffic leader two three is off of three zero left and right turn to zero nine or zero up to four thousand Phoenix Mesa traffic. Yeah, we'll do one more. Anyway, traffic, this is Cessna 66018, so short final, 30 right, stop and go. We have uh, 22 Tango on the upwind and uh, C-130 on the uh, right crossway. Yeah, we'll do one more and then we'll head back to Chandler. Okay. And we will have one, two, three, four, this will be... 
three here, so we'll have six. That's good. What time is it, by the way? Nine. So we start on around uh, the right hand pattern for one more landing. I'll pick it back up on downwind. On the downwind, I wasn't correcting enough for the pretty strong crosswind, which, which while I was on downwind, downwind was coming from right to left, and it was blowing me a little bit way, away from the runway. So I had to correct for that. At least I recognized it on my own. During this flight, since it was a lot of firsts, Larry had been helping me a bit from time to time on, on either tuning the radios or making announcements on the radios and so on. I was starting to feel a little bit more comfortable with the night landings as well as the crosswind at, at Gateway, so I started doing a little bit more. I got a bit low on this approach, so I had to add a little bit of power. Anyway, sit back, relax, and enjoy my last landing at Gateway for the night. And never mind my bad runway length joke. I don't know if I, you want me to make an announcement for you? Or I can do it. Okay, yeah, I don't want to. Gateway traffic, Cherokee 2 2 Tango's uh, entering right downwind for uh, 3 0 right. This will be a stop and go, and we will depart to the uh, west. Gateway traffic. Gateway traffic, Cessna 66018 to Sunday, roll visual right for a same, same pattern. Gateway traffic. Blown way out from the runway, aren't I? Yeah, we're a ways out here. Still warm out here, man. I'm still yeah, it is. Here. Well, we didn't have the uh, hassle of talking to everybody. Uh, that would have made it a lot more exciting because, believe me, it's you got to be getting native information quickly, and this makes it more fun. I actually yeah. don't have to work so hard. Uh, hey, we're a beam. Just barely got to TPA. Good crosswind approach. Gateway traffic, Cessna 66018 is on right. Crosswind. Switch over right. Gateway. Gateway traffic, Cherokee 22 Tango's turning right base for 30 right. Stop and go. Uh, gateway. It's a little confusing about where the end of that runway is. Yeah, it's not real easy to see. They don't have the runway end identifier lights. I think in this case we'll go ahead and land on the right because there's no other traffic here. We could land on the left and then make a left turn out, but let's go ahead and land on the right one. We know there's nobody taking off the center or the left one, otherwise we'd be turning right in their path. But we'll just, after we depart 3-0 right, we'll tell them we're making a turn to the west. We'll be pretty much lined up for a landing on 2-2 at uh, Chandler, by the way. We'll go in that direction. and yeah, I'll put this on for you if you don't mind. Let's put it on 26 2610 because we'll probably be a little bit north of the center line. Why it's fun, it's not as busy at night. It's just not. If you, I used to go in the pattern to change okay, the line at night. I'd be the only one out there. Downwind 20 right, stop and go. Okay, wait. Okay, we're stop and go. Gateway low again tonight. Yeah. That's okay. You got a little throttle back in there and. No, you're looking better here. Except if you, if you land on a runway like this with the lights this far apart, and then you go back to Chandler when we're yeah. not quite as wide. Yeah, all the way to the runway if you need to. See the nose starting to go yeah. a little to the left? Go ahead and put in right rudder and hold the left wing down right to the right till you touch down. If it's strong enough, you might have to hold that rudder all the way in and the aileron. Just land on one wheel first. Okay. I don't know if we have enough runway left. Yeah, we're kidding. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> then we got 5,000 feet, 6,000 feet. Okay. You ready? Yeah, let's go. Okay. And yeah, when you depart, uh, this time we'll tell them we're departing to the west. Okay, with traffic Cessna 660 on right base, 30 right, doing a short approach. Okay, wait, traffic. All right, so we're headed off toward Chandler and the end of the night. One last thing to do at Gateway, though. I needed to simply make my announcement on the traffic advisory frequency about our intentions. But as you'll hear, I screwed it up a bit. I think I mentioned this in another episode, or maybe it was on Will's and Dave's Pilot's Flight Podlog when I was on their show, but and notice I said that correctly first time. 
but I'm so used to working with a tower that the hardest thing for me to do on the radio is, is not approach or talking to the tower, but it's the CTAFs and self-announcements. I, I think this is the opposite of most folks who learn at uncontrolled fields. For that reason, when doing CTAF announcements, I sometimes in my transmission, out of habit, identifying myself rather than restating the name of the traffic that I'm addressing. For those of you unfamiliar, when communicating with air traffic control, you always address them by saying their station name, for example, Chandler Tower or Gateway Ground. And then you identify yourself by saying your type and tail number, such as Cherokee 22 Tango in this case. On the other hand, when using uh, Common Traffic Advisory Frequency, or CTAF, as we were this night at Gateway after the tower was closed, you call the other traffic by saying, for example, gateway traffic. It's customary to end the, the transmission with the name of the traffic as well so that there's no confusion on which CTAF you're using or which one you're addressing. Since sometimes, especially when you're in the air, you can pick up traffic from different airports using the same frequency for their common traffic advisory frequency. Well, in this case, I got myself tongue-tied by beginning to end my transmission as if I were speaking to air traffic control. I then caught myself and rather clumsily tried to correct it. So here you go. Learn from my mistakes. Laugh if you must. But those of you who are pilots and start laughing at me, don't lie. I know you've done it. Gateway traffic. Cherokee 22 Tango is uh, just taking off 3-0 right and will be making a departure to the west. Cherokee. Oh. <laughs> Gateway. So used to having a tower. Yeah, really, when you're used to talking to an uncontrolled field, I usually start with the name of the airport and end with it. Like, uh, yeah. uh, Casa Grande traffic, uh, 2 2 Tango entering left down, 1 or 2 2 left, Casa Grande. So here we go. We continue on for the short hop to Chandler Muni. At least I get a chance to redeem myself on the radio going into Chandler. Actually, come to think of it, this was the first time I think I'd ever operated in Chandler's airspace when it was uncontrolled. So, actually, this was another first for me. Now I see the beacon, at least. That's the fun part about flying around the valley at night. Like I say, I'm not usually plotting courses. I'm using VORs. Okay, I know where it's at. Star 4130, Mike, is entering the uh, downwind and approach end, runway 30 right, gateway traffic. Okay, with traffic, this is Cessna 66018, on the short final, 30 right, Dolph Leggy, from base to final, short approach, gateway traffic. Ready to turn? Yep. And you can head right for Chandler. Shut that off for a minute anyway. Gateway traffic, twin star 4130, Mike, turning right base, runway 30 right, gateway traffic. Gateway traffic, this is Cessna 66018, on a sh over the numbers, 30 right, stop and go, gateway. There was another airplane calling, he was on final for 30 right, I don't know. Yeah, he was doing a short approach. Might have been the same airplane, I'm not sure, but... That'll only be about 7, 6, 7 miles, 6.47 miles. And yeah, let's go ahead and down there, frequency. If there's nobody around here, what do you think? Uh, 126.10. Another mile, make sure nobody else is in the gateway here. I don't see anybody in the pattern for Chandler either. Yeah, we're on Chandler. Chandler traffic, helicopter 71, minor zero trolley. It's departing the handle pad, southbound. Chandler traffic. Wanna make a straight in for 2 2 right? Yeah, that sounds okay with me. If there are planes here going around, I'd probably right. do a pattern entry, but yeah, I think you're probably in agreement with, with me on that. But I don't mind doing a straight in for 2-2 uh, right if you want. Okay. How far away are we? Five miles? Uh, five and a half miles right here. Chandler traffic, Cherokee 2-2 two -two Tango is uh, five miles uh, from the field. We're going to make a straight in approach for 2-2 two -two right, full stop. Chandler. So we're almost there, but Larry decides to make this a bit more interesting. He decides that I'll do the next landing with the landing light off. It sounds like he says landing light on in the recording, but he said off because that's what we did. I also left in a mention for my annual dive trip I take with a bunch of my buddies. I was leaving for that the very next morning early, 
so I was glad to get this flight in before I left. So enjoy my landing. It turned out to be a pretty good one, even with the landing light off. Well, the only thing I'm going to do this time, next time we go down Moran and come back, we'll, we'll do the light, whole lights out thing, but I think what I'll do is just turn the, keep the landing light on in this one. Okay. And just use whatever lighting you had on the side of the runways to... You'll find you do have a little lighting there. It's so quiet out here at night. Yeah, it's beautiful. Even though it's warm, you can imagine in the middle of the day you're sweating and bouncing, but at least at <laughs> night it cools off a little bit and it's fairly smooth. We do have some wind out here tonight, but... Now, would I just, this far out, just keep it at 80 and yeah, then slow it that's down what I would get do. closer? Yeah, that's what I do. I keep it a little faster until I got a little closer just so I can get there a little faster. And I've forgotten what it's like. I mean, you know, when I learned as a student, I did downwind, base, and final. And all of a sudden, when I first started doing long, straight-in approaches, for me, it's like, okay, how do I judge this? But yeah. you've got pappies now. Without the pappies, I'd keep the green right at one spot on the windshield. And again, if I also knew the field elevation of what altitude I'm at, I'd roughly know, right. give me a rough idea how high I am. But if I transpose that green at one spot on the windshield and keep it there all the way down, that means you're approaching, you know, if it starts to go up, you're getting low. If you start to, it starts to disappear under the nose, you're getting high. And obviously, when you get close, that goes out the window because it's yeah. going to disappear. But Looks like we have a slight right to left yeah. crosswind. We're keeping two lights white there, so that's good. Yeah, pappies are very useful at night. A little harder to judge, maybe, so pappies are very, they help quite a bit. I don't know if I like run, run, runway end identifier lights. Uh, those to me are almost distracting. Or you can get those lead-in lights, sequence flashing right. lights down to Castro. I can take you down there at night, and turn them up full blast. They'll blind you practically. <laughs> well, that's how bright they are. They get really bright. You know, you can assume a guy's coming in an instrument approach and it's foggy or low visibility. They want the runway intensity lights turned up so they can see the runway. But on a clear night out here, boy, it's just. On vacation at 6:30 in the morning? Yeah. Or were you kidding? Going on, no, I wasn't kidding. We're going on a. It's my annual guy's dive trip. Oh, cool. Yeah. Where do you go for that? Um, we get on a, a liveaboard boat out of Santa Barbara, and we wow. uh, live on the boat for three days. Wow. Nice. Cool. Yeah, it's it's really fun actually. Yeah, and have, that wind is so strong that I'm having to keep power in to get there. Yeah, your ground speed's a little bit slower, so that's... I love having a nice headwind like this. It gets yeah. a lot slower. And tonight, you're, like I said, you'll see the runway. You'll see a little lighting for the center line, and you use those light the lights off the side of the runway for... And again, if you have any doubts at all, you just keep a little power in and just kind of feel your way down to the runway. You can tell about where it's at. Like I said, I can see the numbers there going under them. Not real visible, but yeah, you can see the center line lights, and you can use it. And just right here, if you were in doubt, just kind of ease it down. That looks really good. Boy, that couldn't, that was nice. So if the landing light burns out, you know you can do it. And again, with it, when in doubt, keep a little power in, get it down there, and just kind of use that power to do like a soft field landing kind of technique. Yeah, I was in this plane today on the cross country, and it happened, uh, that it happened twice. And we'll turn the lights back on. <laughs> there we go. There you go. And up uh, here, if there's any planes out here, we'll shut the strobes off. Uh, boost pump off. Sorry, electrical, you've got the landing light off. Leave that on, so. Or on, I mean, and yeah, uh, everything's good, okay. Stand by. Well, good. We got six landings in. The three, one, two, three, four, five, six. So good. You know, I've been doing ten with everybody, and uh, one of the, I don't know if it's Kurt or Steve or some of the other guys told all of us, they said, you know, the guys don't need to get a minimum of ten. They need a minimum of ten, but if you can get them twelve or fifteen, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that. So uh -huh. going, yeah, that's that's true. But I think we'll get you probably over 10. Oh, that was really fun. It is. It's a lot of fun. Uh, 
love this night flying stuff. But believe me, going through an airport at night is a whole different experience, especially a big airport. I mean, you can get lost in a sea of lights down there. Yeah. And uh, well, I was I was so surprised how hard it was for me to find uh, PHX. Yeah. I mean, I would yeah, think that it would just be stand right out. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's why I told you the lights kind of blend in. Yeah. Well. So there we go. We finished the flight, taxied in, and put her away. And I left the next morning for my dive trip as planned. Had a great time, by the way. As you heard at the end, and as I mentioned in episode 19, I found it pretty surprising how hard it was to find Phoenix Sky Harbor at night, or even the smaller airports for that matter. I'm definitely going to need a little bit more practice. I would do one more night flight before my check ride, which of course is the mandatory night cross country, and we'll hit that in a future cast. But I'm sad to say, actually, that even now, over what is it now, two months after successfully finishing my private pilot's license, I have not flown again at night. I'll cover this more later, but it turns out I'm actually flying a bit with an instructor right now, getting familiar with some different airplanes as well as getting my high-performance endorsement. So I think I'll try to do a little night refresher with him in the next little while and then try to keep current on my night stuff. I I really loved flying this flight at night and my cross-country that I'd I'd do later, so I want to make sure that I continue my night flying and get better and better at it. Well, thanks once again for, for listening. I really appreciate all of the feedback I get, and I love hearing about people that the aviation potosphere inspired to start training. Keep me posted on what all of you are doing, and feel free to contact me anytime. You can email me at bill at studentpilotcast.com or use the contact form on the website at www.studentpilotcast.com. Come by the website. I'm starting to do more blog posts that are not actual episodes. So you can check out some of that content, including some comments and a link to a short film by Brian Terwilliger, the director and producer of the great documentary One Six Right. This little film he put out called Flying Full Circle. It documents his personal history and his media ride with, uh, with the Blue Angels. It's a great little film on the Internet. I also want to acknowledge on my feed uh, Jack, Jeb, and Dave over at Uncontrolled Airspace for publishing their 100th episode. Most of the other podcasters, including me, put together a congratulatory audio blurb, and they included that in their 100th episode, but I wanted to congratulate them on, on my feed as well. I know it's unlikely that you're listening to me and don't know about them, but for Pete's sake, if you aren't listening to these guys at uncontrolledairspace.com, get with the program. It's an incredibly entertaining and informative podcast. So congratulations, guys, and thanks very much to Steve Tupper for thinking of and organizing the podcaster's congrats that that, uh, he sent over to them. Okay, as I mentioned, I'm doing a bit of training again, this time with a new instructor, and, and not part of the school that I trained at, actually. I'll get into the details later, but essentially this is because I joined a flying club to give myself an affordable way to get even more flying in and and make doing it a bit easier. Of course, I'm recording my new training and and my flights uh, that I've been doing, and I'll share all of those with you in due course. So the club thing gives me a bit of a taste of airplane ownership without having to dive right in right away. Obviously, I'll talk more about this soon, but I want to keep all of you posted on the highlights, at least, of my flying endeavors as a private pilot. We'll get there eventually, and we can get into the details. For now, though, my cast has brought us to sort of the midpoint in my training and right to the cross countries. From here on out, my training just seemed to fly by, and I can't wait to share it with you all. So stay tuned for more episodes coming. For now, though, take care of yourselves. It's a great day. After all, we're pilots. Or at least will be someday. Music for today's audio cast is the song To Be an Angel from the great Canadian band Uncle Seth. You can get more information and subscribe to the Student Pilot audio cast using iTunes, Zune, or any other podcatcher at www.studentpilotcast.com.
Remember, any instruction that you hear in this podcast was meant for me and me alone in the situation that we happen to be in at the time. Please do not try to apply anything you see or hear in this episode or any other episode to your own flying. If you have questions about any portion of your flying, please consult your own CFI.